Hey everybody, Mark Ruggiero here, Clark Commando 1983. I'm working on uh, Grognard Simulations Death Ride Kursk and doing a setup for the July 11th um, start. Um, this is, I want to, in this video, I want to just show you the scenario card, which we are looking at the front of it. Um, then show you the map I got set up and a couple other things. And this will be kind of like part one. <coughs> and then I'm going to work on a setup and go from there. So here we go. So on your scenario card, you're going to have, this is the maps, which I'll show you on the back. And it has boundary markers, start lines, uh, blue victory lines. And then for each HQ that you see there, and of course it shows you the Russians get some fortifications in those setup zones. But for each of those headquarters, you have the accompanying uh, forces that get the setup in the zones, which are from the start line back to the um, other start line within those black boundaries. You also have areas marked out of bounds. Those are be adjacent divisional areas. Um, you also have a key here with the different um, things mean. And then on the back, you get, uh, let's turn this around a little bit. You get to read what the general situation is, what the mission is for the Germans and the Russian player. Uh, what turns, the maps you're going to use, um, uh, any th phases that have already been done or special uh, adjustments that need to be made. Let's see here. Deployments, where they can go, some notes on that. Victory levels, and then a little bit of historical commentation. Also, um, this piece, I'm going to show you this first, the scenario card. Now, I use plexiglass. Other players use other things, but let's see if we can get a view here. And I've bought, uh, there's a gentleman that sells single piece maps. So, I'll give you kind of the aerial view here. With those lines that you saw. You can see I use wet erase marker on Plexi. Okay. Red lines are Russian start lines. I didn't draw the German start lines because they're literally right on the opposite side of that. And you have a boundary marker. And you also have another out of bounds. Right? So that matches what I showed you. This is of course i haven't set up yet is the hexes that or the areas that correspond so these like for example this unit here and these units here are going to set up from this red line and inside this black zone and then we have the other group up here we have the ninth guard airborne which is set up in that second red zone and then we have the fifth guards army and fifth guards tank army reserves way in the back or assets and so, uh, some of those i'm going to be able to attach to these guys up front i'm using uh i'll show you the charts here in a minute i'm using some optional artillery assignment markers and the intent of this is not to go over the rules, but these are the optional whoops, assignment markers for artillery. And basically what they are is the R are your big guns in the artillery part. They have certain restrictions, but you're going to assign them to support units in the army. And then you have general support which are his artillery that's assigned to support the uh, core, basically. 
and then direct support or anything from rifle regiments, uh, tank brigades, like very specific assignments. And each artillery assignment has its own set of restrictions and when you can change it during the day. And this is the Russian set, and then this is the German set. So, one thing that I really like, I know some people don't, is, and I guess I should have learned this, use the background, but, well, I guess it's kind of hard to see. But I like the fatigue speckling on the German counters. Um, but like I said, I've done other videos on um, how to play Death Ride. So what the numbers on the counters mean and stuff. So I'm not going to get into that. Um, what else? I want to show you in this video some of the charts that come with the game. And I just really think this is a great set. I appreciate I'm doing these videos because I like doing them. So, And uh, anyways... You get a player aid card with the sequence of play on it, which looks like a lot. If you notice, let's kind of get in a little closer. They're color coded. It's not near as bad as it looks. The reason they're color coded is because the other thing I really like about Death Ride is you can play it on four different levels standard rules, standard with optionals. Um, you have all the way up to what's called the ultimate, where you use all the rules. There's some more charts there. Here's the terrain effects chart. Uh, the anti-aircraft and the ground attack. This is the terrain effects for movement. Also the mine entry and exit table. Which we're using the uh, mines impact adjacent hexes too at half value. You got the fire table um, and some various other tables and charts, patrols, and uh, other things. We're doing a one day scenario, so there's a patrol modifier in effect for the Germans. Um, neat little handy thing on some uh, suppression rules and whatnot. <coughs> some more game mechanics. <coughs> the ever important firepower table. Yes, there is math in this game. So if you don't like math, you may not like it. But you kind of get used to it, and it goes pretty quickly once you start doing it. We have, this is the optional assault tables that I'm going to be using. And basically, it adds, both players get to roll dice, defender on one table, attacker on another table. And it adds what's called fanatic resistant results. And that's anywhere where a plus shows up, or possibly adjacent to it. It ups the attacker's losses, um, which is kind of neat. I mean, right, the Russians, or in the rare case where the Russians are assaulting, you know, defenders like being fanatic. Modifier table, nice little track, keep track of the modifiers for your combat. Um, anyways, um, I'll show you the OBs. And a couple of things I'm looking at for setup in the next video. Oops. All right. So, that being said, let's give you a nice little aerial view of the map, which I really like. Uh, one thing I'll get a little closer here. It's subtle, but height differences are different tones. But I think it's a very clean map. And... It's very unambiguous on terrain. So, anyways, thank you for watching and tune in for part two. Thank you.